Limited Atonement. And uh, what I'd like to title this is The Limited Logic of Calvinistic Atonement. And uh, we're going to have plenty of Bible in here, but uh, let's first, I want to explain what Calvinistic atonement is. It, atonement, or the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, is only offered to those that God chooses. There's no more, no less. It's, I pick you, 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 and that's all that Jesus' sacrifice did, right? Just for them. Uh, that's it in a nutshell. So, let's talk about some of this Calvinistic logic. I'm going to give a few verses um, that they use as, as kind of straw man. Um, we're going to go through them, and then I'm going to give you what the Bible says. Two points. Calvinistic logic, what the Bible says, number two. So, <laughs> All right, the first is that salvation was manifest to the saints, so it wasn't manifested to anyone else. That is their logic. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 25 and 26 says, Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. And they'll use that to say, hey, it was manifest to his saints, right? It was revealed to his saints. This sacrifice, this atonement, isn't manifest to everyone, although we'll see plenty of verses where it is, but it was just to the saints, okay? And I have a little uh, a visual for you, okay? I drew this, okay? Not my one, I, it's really good. I used a pot to do the outline and everything, yeah? Okay, now I did this whole picture. So, it would be fair to say that I drew this circle and I colored it. It would also be fair to say that I colored all of the blue, right? Where God says that he manifested himself to his saints, I colored all the blue. Does that exclude that I did the rest of the circle? No, it doesn't. So when God says, hey, he manifested himself to his saints, that doesn't exclude that he manifested himself to the world. That doesn't exclude that he draws all men, right? It, it's a fallible uh, a piece of logic. And that's all that I needed for that. <laughs> it, it's just, it's baloney is what it is. To say that, hey, because there's this one phrase here that says that he manifested himself to a specific group of people, that he didn't manifest himself to anyone else. It's, it's garbage. Uh, second point here is that... Uh, that they've brought up is words have multiple meanings, so God didn't mean what he said. Okay? And specific words are um, such as the world. Now we understand that the world can mean like we're talking about secular, the secular world, right? Ungodliness, things like that. And the Bible does use it for that. The Bible also uses it for um, you know, the earth, the the world itself, like the planet per se, the ball, okay. <laughs> and it also uses it to talk about everyone, all the inhabitants of the world. It uses all of those. So that was kind of like what um, Brother Ross was saying, shades of truth, right? And here's, here's the verse uh, that, that I heard a Calvinist use. John 12, 19. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, perceive ye how ye prevail nothing. Behold, the world has gone after him. Now, does that mean that everyone in the world went after Jesus? The Calvinists are saying, no, it doesn't. But guess who you're quoting? You're quoting the Pharisees who are exaggerating. And if you know anything about exaggerations, they're lies. Amen. Yeah. Okay? That's good. So they're, they're getting in a tizzy. They're getting in a fit, the Pharisees here, right? And they're like, the whole world's gone after him. When... Really, in, in fact, they still had a pretty good stronghold, and we see that few are saved, right? They just didn't like giving up any of their power, right? right? But when God says He loved the world, right, that He gave His only begotten Son, we're not talking about a small portion of people. We're talking about the world, yes, right? Uh, and my 
Third point for uh, Calvinist logic is the reason why it's fallible is because their doctrine is based on poor translations. Um, numerous times, um, I'm listening to this Calvinist preach, and he's, I am assuming he was preaching out of an ESV. I did not look to see what version he was using. I know he was not using the King James Version. Um, and he would add words which would make little, little groups of people instead of talking about large groups of people. All right? Such as Isaiah 53, verse 11. I'll read this verse for you. He says, uh, He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Many. So we're talking about Jesus Christ dying on the cross and bearing the sins of many. Okay? And obviously we know because there is a condition for salvation that not everyone's going to be saved. Jesus Christ can't bear everyone's sins if they don't believe on him, right? But that doesn't mean that he didn't pay for it. What the Calvinists are reading out of their Bible is that his righteous servant shall justify the many. Oh, there's a group of people, the many. All right, so we've got a select group of people here, not many, which is open-ended. That's what they're using in a bad translation. Not only that, but we've seen before how Calvinists will say, uh, using the ESV, that can that faith save him in James chapter 2, when it does not say that. It says, can faith save him, right? They ex making an exclusion here, making this, oh, a certain type of something, a certain group of, of believers or a certain group of faith, instead of it just being faith or just being many. That's, that's the end of the, the Calvinist logic uh, debunking. Now let's talk about what the Bible says. Go ahead and turn to John 14 and verse uh, 22. <clears throat> and I'm going to read uh, two verses. Um, it's, it's a good read, but uh, we're going to, for the sake of time, because there are a lot of verses that I'm going to get through here. <clears throat> the Bible says, uh, well... First, let me give you my point. Not all is manifested, okay? But salvation is manifested to all. John chapter 14, verse 22. Judas saith unto him, talking about Jesus, you know, talking to Jesus. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? So they'll use this here and say, see, look. He's just manifesting himself to those who will be saved. Except there's a problem here. These people are already saved. Amen. How will you manifest yourself to us and not the world? Verse 26, we see the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So we see here that the Holy Ghost is there not to get them saved. It's to teach them the deeper things in God's Word. And let's, it, let's admit it. There are things that the lost world cannot understand about the Bible right. because they don't have the Holy Ghost. Right. right? They don't have the Holy Spirit. But that's what this is talking about. It's not talking about salvation. And then we see in the next verse that he was going to give them peace. Not like the world gives. Right? There are certain things that Jesus manifests to his people that he does not manifest to the world. But salvation is manifested to the world. Romans 6, uh, I'm sorry, Romans 16, 25 says, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. We see the, the condition there too. It's for the obedience of faith. Hey, it's being made known to all nations so that you can choose to obey through faith. So that you can choose to believe on Jesus Christ. And, and here's where we're going to get a lot of verses here. Salvation is available to all. We're looking at 
the world. We're looking at all men. Okay, 1 Timothy 2, 4 through 6, uh, 2, 4 and 6. No, I wrote that down wrong. 1 Timothy 2, verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself, look at this, a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Nowhere in there are you going to see limited atonement. Right. You're going to see that Jesus Christ was and is, uh, that he wants all men to be saved and that he gave himself as a ransom for all. First right. Timothy 4.10, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men. Now, Calvinists are going to tell you, look, all men are all the men who believe. Or all men mean all kindreds, all peoples, all... But the verse isn't over yet. He's the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. So we're talking about two different groups of people here. Those that believe, a little blue square right there, right? And all men. He gave himself for all men. He is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe, because those are the only ones who are going to get that gift. John 2, 1 through 2, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also the sins of the whole world. Okay, this right here is speaking directly to those who believe like, hey, look, you know, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the father. You know, you sin, you realize that you've done wrong as a believer. You can go and you can ask God for forgiveness. And our advocate, Jesus Christ, will be there to to work that out. You know, maybe, hey, because you're humble. I know when my kids are humble, they get a lot less punishment then when they're just like, I didn't do it. And I'm like, well, yeah, I, got you. I watched you do it. You know, <laughs> it ain't nothing that's hid from God, right? So Jesus Christ is there as an advocate for us. But it also says that he is an advocate for not us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. He is there waiting to be able to advocate for those people in the world. But guess what? Just like you've got a, a lawyer maybe that's an advocate that'll do pro bono work, right? And you get yourself in trouble and you're in front of the court. Guess what? That guy who's doing pro bono work, if you don't want him to help you, if you don't want him to help you, yeah, I said that right. If you don't want him to help you, he's not going to help you. That's right. He probably couldn't legally help you if you didn't want him to help you, Amen. That's right? Right? And Jesus Christ is there as our advocate, as the advocate for the whole world, waiting for you to choose him. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go to the curse is compared to the gift. Because what they'll say is that, hey, look, it's only all is only all those who believe. All is not everybody. Okay? Let's go over to Romans chapter 5. We're going to look... Look at this a good bit. I'm going to go over to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. <clears throat> Romans chapter 5, verse 17 through 19 says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. So let me ask you a question. <clears throat> as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Right? We talked about the shades of gray. Right? How many people in the world choose to sin? 
Let's say everybody, yeah, right? Amen. All. All. The gift is compared to the curse. Okay? We all choose to sin. Right. And he says, hey, look, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification. Right? right? Sin came to us. We understand sin. We have that knowledge and we can choose right or wrong and we choose wrong. That's right. The gift comes to us. It's been given to all men right. to choose. Right. Do you want the gift or not? And sadly, many people reject that gift. Right? right? It's not like that fallen, that fallen nature, that sin nature, where we just eh, naturally just choose to do sin. Hey, we have to look at and, and we have to hear God's word and we have to choose life. That uh, last verse there, verse 19, for as by one man's disobedience went, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Right? And of course they'll say, hey, many, it's not everybody, but it's because not everyone believes. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Sec 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 15. We see, for the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Right? We see in that first verse that one died for all. Why? Because all were dead. Okay? Now, he died for all, and unfortunately not all will choose him, but all that do choose him will live, uh, should not live unto themselves. Right? That's what we see in this verse. Now, in closing, I'm going to give you an Old Testament example of unlimited atonement. Exodus chapter 12, verse 3 and 4 says, uh, this is when we're laying, God is laying down the Passover, which is the sacrifice. It's the picture of Jesus Christ being slain for the sins of the world. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. One lamb per house. Okay, And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to, the, uh, to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. So what do we see here? Is the lamb too little for the house? No. It says, if the household be too little for the lamb. Okay, what we have is unlimited atonement or limited atonees, if you will, right? There's not enough people that Jesus Christ couldn't cover. Right. That's limited atonement is garbage. Amen. Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole world. He is the propitiation for the whole world. All they need to do is choose Him. And like, um, like Brother Zach was saying, that is their foundation, is no choice. If there's no choice then everything would make sense. But there's a choice. Right. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for all the scripture that is out there, Lord, uh, just, to exp just to show your mercy and, and your power in, in letting us believe on you and, and to get that gift from you. In Jesus' name, amen.